so exciting. It's always such a great time of the year. It marks one of the many traditions that Rectory does every year to celebrate all of your success and it has a special place in our hearts because it's a time where we can honor the ninth graders, hear from them. They're mostly the ones who we're going to be hearing from today, uh, both musically and with their words. So I hope we can all just relax. We're going to do what we do at the start of every monthly chapel, where we just take a minute to just sit quietly, take a big deep breath. And many of us have been here before because of our holiday chapel, but I just want you to think right now, you're not going to say anything out loud, I want you to, in your mind, notice three things around you that you see. Just notice three things. And three things you hear. And then three things that you feel somewhere in your body or around you. It's a chance to tuck away all of our thoughts and worries and to-do lists and to just be present here together for each other and for yourself and to get the most out of this experience that we put a lot of time and effort into, particularly students have. So before I share a couple things about what this chapel is about, I would like us to do what we always do, which is to begin with our Rectory Chapel Covenant Read Together. Um, we'll get us started. We are each on a savior journey to understand We have these a lot, but not in our area. 
So you can imagine, you can imagine, and maybe some of you responded to this question, which road sign best describes your journey? There is no right or wrong answer, and there's no bad road sign, even, even if the road sign is stop, right? It doesn't mean that you're gonna quit school, right? Stop might just mean stop, take inventory of where you are and decide if you're going the right way, right? Or stop before you make that decision that you might regret, or whatever the case may be. So I'm not gonna say a whole lot more other than we've had some fun with it. I wanna thank all ninth graders who shared their ideas. I want to especially thank the ninth graders who were brave enough to share their stories. So today is a day to celebrate the ninth graders, to let them reflect, and also to hopefully have their wisdom be shared with all of you, underclassmen and teachers and parents, uh, because we have a lot to learn from kids who've been through rectory, for some of them for five plus years. We have students here who were in elementary school. So please sit back and enjoy what they have to say, and we're happy to also hear from Mr. Long and Mr. McCarthy later in the program, because they are two teachers who've made a big impact on our school and their meetings here. So we really look forward to hearing what they have to say. But before we begin with our speakers, we're going to have the lighting on the peace candle. And just a reminder, this is a time where it's whether you are someone who prays, or someone who meditates, or someone who just wants to be thinking about other people around the world, this is your chance to really take a moment and give some thought to the places in your world, in your families, in your hearts that are maybe not always at peace, and just give a little attention to that. So I would like the fourth graders, this is their last time doing this as, as fourth graders, to light the peace candle for us while we hear some instrumental music.
I'm Jerry, and I'm a ninth grader in a ninth grader in Bradford, and this is my fourth year. And I came here, up here to acknowledge all of my past, and every ninth grader is where asked to write a letter about themselves to themselves in the future, and look towards the next ten years of your life. We'll open it ten years later when we re, when we're like reunion. And I'm here to share a letter that I wrote to the past. Dear Jerry. You know, you know the time when you're writing something but you have no idea how to start it, but you just want to watch the black line of the Google Docs flashing? Well, this is what I'm doing right now, and you're staring at the black line. I miss you so much. How are you doing? Isn't it crazy? You're already leaving your home in China and heading a place called New England, if you know where that is. It's the northeastern part of the United States, and I'm sure you'll probably figure it out in four years. Back to the topic. I can't believe you're stepping into the place that's completely different from the place you stayed in China. It's a wonderful place and it's going to treat you so nicely. You're going to do so well in this place. Don't ask me how I know that. I've been through a lot more than trust me. On this journey of the bright future in the school, you are encountered so many people that merge into this high speed title without others. And these wonderful human beings will join this four year long ride behind. Every yield sign on your journey, more individuals come in to share hearts in the process of pursuing success. Yield to these people, let them go in front of you and lead deeper away in your life. And right in front of you, there are your friends that lead with their bright headlights clearing the road for you. Shout out to all my friends. And let them be on your side, supporting you, holding you accountable. On your left, there are people who remind you to put the seatbelt on around your waist when you're driving. Shout out to Mr. Aang for keeping us to wear a belt in school days. <laughs> on your left, uh, on your left, I mean, on your right, there's the person who shout out to. Come on, it's your cue to turn right and be on stage. Shout out to the new cast and all of the directors, Ms. Basto. And let them be behind you, pushing you forward with your voices. Hustle, scrap. Shout out to Mr. Roy. Um, this will join in your journey with your appreciation and love. Yield to all these opportunities provided for you. And Make way for them with the same amount of love and appreciation. Yield to challenges. Just let the challenges hit, hit you right in the face and trust me, it will turn into something you would never regret trying for. If you like acting or singing, yeah, you do. I bet in the, same, in the same time you step on the stage, yield to the feelings of characters flush in your head. You will love it. Speaking of singing, I miss your innocent, unchanged sharp voice of a child and ten years old, I would hit every single high note if I if I was your age, so I miss that. I'm pretty jealous about it. <laughs> Yield to the other strength too, just like the famous person also named Jerry Dune, you know, four years older than me. Appreciate others with the same amount of appreciation you see. Allow others to shine on this lonely job at night just because he plays goals and sucks at basketball. It is fun to beat the heck out of him and then lose together as a team. I understand the last part I meant. You remember the special unforgettable bonding moment with everyone. Your life is so much more than this piece of paper. You have to see with your own eyes. Your memory and your legacy and your recreation are stories that will never end. And I will free to spoil everything for you, but remember, look forward to the future with your brightest mind. If you're lost, <laughs> look up to the sky and the shining star will lead you away. The orange star would always be there shining in your heart. Just keep going through the darkness, then you'll find the orange star waiting to be found. Yield to all of your opportunities to shine. Give everything the space to allow them to support you and become the person you want to be. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Although I have completely no idea what you're going to do in the next four years in the future, I'm quite sure that you will also eventually stand here and talk to a bunch of lovely people in the audience. And I hope you have a better speech than this. <laughs> Uh, also, go see the day for the new guys. P.S. Don't try too much in the last two weeks of school, especially every day in the last couple of weeks. Your eyes will hurt and they won't look good on pictures. Thank you. <laughs> Always here.
about my actual life. It was beginning. Hello everyone. As you all know, my name is Hiku. Um, I'm in my theater graduating this year. I know listening to speech is not always fun, and my might be not always good, at, not as good as others. It might be not funny, or it would be boring. But today, as the first of my last of my chapel speech, I want to quickly share my stories and rectory. Before I really start starts, I want to. Then the teachers who let me stand here and the students who made my rectory such a great place. My time at rectory has never been easy. It was like a series of trials and challenges. About friends, academics, and all life stresses that made me come. I have failed multiple times and have given up on things, but it always came back with lessons. A person can never be as strong as a tree. Even if you became a reed in a huge storm, don't break it down. That was the first lesson I had learned in Rachel. Be a strong person and define yourself really well. There will be times when you think of what kind of person I am. If you cannot answer in two seconds, you have to really think deeply about who you are. Also, I wanted to tell you guys that do not ever convince yourself to others. Just be you at any time, any moment. Now, about myself, I was a little girl who did not even know how to make friends and did not know how to love myself. So, I have struggled a lot since the beginning of 8th grade. I have lost people who I love. I even had it myself. But since I started to love myself and try not to convince others, Rector became the best school in my life. There always will be teachers and friends who will always be willing to help you. A middle school is an immature place, but also a place where you can turn out as mature high school students. My rectory was a place where I could learn about myself and others. Also, it is a good place to meet great connections or relationships with others. Especially my ninth year came really special to me. It was a totally different experience from my uh, eighth grade year. It was much better and much more enjoyable. Thank, uh, thank you all for making my last year so beautiful. And now, all right, after the stage, I'm playing a quick song for you guys, and I want to explain about this. The song that I'm playing calls In Yang in Korean, which means to meet or relations or destiny. In Korean, especially in Buddhist, we believe in people meet each other because of the need. And it builds all the special relationship between people to people. I think this song is really meaningful in a romantic way and also in a friendly way. Like the title of the song, Destiny of Relationship, I have had my great relationship in Red Tree over all two years. I met my best previous roommate and most and the hearted roommates, funniest lifelong friends, and a lot of sweet buses. Now I am graduating, but I hope next year all the fifth through eighth graders who are going upper class, you all can make another great friends like me at Rectory and have a great time as enjoying as a lead of the school in theaters. And thank you for listening and now please enjoy my song.
But here today, we're stronger, wiser, and ready to face the world. Remember, my fellow graduates and people, that resilience is not merely the ability to ensure challenges, but to rise above that and grow stronger because of that. If Mr. Campbell is here, I'm just curious. He's not? Well, I gotta tell you guys a secret. You know, after being kicked out from this class, I previewed every single like material before his class, like in, like just to impress him. Anyway, remember that you remember the first day of school? Yes, I remember. I got here and I saw Murphy and I was like, this haunted house is not being adorable. I got you. Yes, I spent half an hour trying to find Murphy. I'm not even joking. Well, moreover, to stop signs encourages us to embrace the present moment and our pursuit of success. It's very easy to become like consumed by stop constantly chasing the next milestone. However, true joy and fulfillment are found by figuring out the present, appreciating the friendships we form, the knowledge we gain, and the experience that no one can tell that has shaped us into the individuals we are today. Well, if we return to the crowd of strangers in the future, which we might, we're going to see you again, be sad, Danny. But, um, these precious bonds will follow us lifelong. I would never forget karaoke and dancing in a pouring rain, <coughs> at least. And countless pig dons behind the pavilion, sneaking into dorm from off-campus trips. Still, we're sorry, Ms. Clint. And um, the same odor of food and vanilla bean, and the suntans on the endless field and beyond our campus. Oh, also the deep life talk around the campus. Nor will I forget the people that embrace these memories with me, all here and nowhere in Concord, Connecticut. Well, let's not forget to celebrate this very moment, for it is a testament to our hard work and dedication. Master, this stop sign symbolizes the power of choice. Let us be ready. A conscious decision to stop before proceeding reinforces the ability to do what has in life. Well, what are you going to miss in most? The laughter that will wake up everyone, rather than the lights out. Ladybugs everywhere. <laughs> After a solid DIY, there are sessions during midnight. The crumbling of the face, falling of the high beds.
record experience was completely different. While we did agree that record gave us the weirdest and most unique experience that we'll ever experience, that no other school will. I'll never forget about Mr. Julie's math class, where we have to remember all his family's name. I'll never forget how everyone in Mercy gets stuck in a birdhouse and a bathroom every night. I'll never forget how a random guy just started chasing me and Alan, throwing pineapples at us in Puerto Rico, with Ethan on the side of the window. As I've been 
excited to share with you guys my experience at Rector. So just a heads up, this week is pretty last minute. My name is even on the program, but it's great to be here. So my experience at Rector was life changing, as cliche as that may sound. I came into Rector seeking for a new change, a fresh beginning. And I chose the road sign of Merging Way, the third one's good. But one of those lanes represented the type of person I wanted to become, while the other lane represented the type of person I was. In a rectory, those two lanes merged together in the best way possible, and I'm so proud of how far I came today. I remember at the beginning of the school year when I first got on campus, I was afraid of talking to people I didn't know, talking to people I knew from online class, but I never really talked to. And even the thought of speaking up in class scared me to death because I was afraid of not wanting the right answer, of people judging me, of being embarrassed in front of the whole class. But throughout my years at Rectory, and with the encouragement of my classmates and teachers who did not make fun of me, well, maybe some people did, like Ethan and David, <laughs> but I learned to push myself out of my comfort zone and edge closer to the person I wanted to become. At the same time, however, I learned to accept myself for who I am, that I'm not perfect, and that I did not need to be someone who I was not. And I am so, 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 so beyond lucky to have made lifelong friends at Rectory who love me for who I am, and who I know would always be there for me when I need them. Rita told me to include this quote. <laughs> it is a people, a rectory can make a rectory, rectory. Thank you so much, everyone, for making this the legit best three years of my life. And I will miss you and love you so, so much. Let's go, class of 2023! I 
fell in love with Satan again. And I'll forever be grateful to Rita who encouraged me to try out the solo of the puddle. And send me the recording of the musical with your Evanescent. Her, along with many other people I read to, inspired my passion for theater that I will never let go of ever. And changed me to become unafraid to step up in front of the audience to share and talk to me. Rectory was the first and only place in my life, besides my family, where I could completely open up about myself to others. I met Mr. Bendel, who I could trust enough that he gave me relationship advice during the three hours of my practice. <laughs> I met Jerry Drew and Alex Chen, who now knows me so much about me that we know, that we know what we're thinking just by looking at each other's eyes. I met our president, Ashma, who gave me the wisest advice for my personal issues and truly made me mature as a person. Without them, I wouldn't have been the person I am today. I'm sure at this point I've spoken with every single one of you in this room, and my three years here have shown me that everyone here has a passion so strong that although we might make the room entirely awkward or silent, it will go after anyways. And you inspire the initially awkward, insecure individual to become unafraid to be the star and step forward. The role sign I chose was go for the head. Rectory broke down the cracked, fragile concrete on my road and topped it with fresh, bright feelings during my three years here. To all of you who have time left at Rectory, make yourself a star by not being afraid of others' judgment and never be afraid to be the one wearing red in a great crowd. And to all of you who were with me during my time at Rectory, thank you so much for being part of the best thing that happened. Don't let it stand in your way. 
know about time, time isn't really real. It's all on your point of view. How does it feel for you? And then Einstein said he could never understand it all. The planet's spinning through space. The smile upon your face. <clears throat> Welcome to the human race. So Secret of life is enjoying the passage of time.
I'm going to give you a few examples of that through my life that have really stood out to me. Uh, in my early days of rectory school, I mean, I was really young. Uh, when I had parent-teacher conferences, the teachers really, the parents didn't, had no idea that I was actually a teacher. Uh, if you go in my classroom, I have some pictures of me. I look exactly like a 16-year-old boy. Right uh, there was a young boy named Nick Schreiber who was in eighth grade. He was a troublemaker. I taught him in eighth grade. And he was a big time troublemaker. He was sitting one evening, and Mr. Brad Seward was sitting over there. He's assistant headmaster, worked 43 years here. And he was on the phone with his parents, talking to him. And I sat down with Nick, and Nick had a troubled life in the upbringing. Uh, everyone has a story. And I sat down with Nick for 20 to 25 minutes, and I had a heart to heart with him. Basically, I was telling him what path you could be choosing are you emerging lane path, stop, the red blinking light. All those signs that you would have in the road. And I said, if you're not lucky, you're not going to be at Rector anymore. He was suspended for a week or two, I can't quite remember. Uh, but he came back to Rector, and I, he graduated at, at, as a ninth grader. And as a ninth grader, I went up to him and graduated. I said, Nick, you had a great turnaround. Congratulations, I'm proud of you. And he said to me, Mr. Long, it was that night in Mr. Seward's office, that speech to me hit right here. And he said, I want to do it for you. Because of that, that turned my life around in that moment. So, as a teacher, you never realize that moment that you might make that connection with that student and, and that bond. And rectory school has those special moments that we carry with us for the rest of our lives. Uh, another important road sign that we might have is not even in here. And when you travel from state to state, it might say, Welcome to Massachusetts. <laughs> Or I might say, welcome to another country. Back in the day, many, many years ago, I was director of residential life. And one thing that I always made sure I would do is when a student was coming into campus, I was at their car to greet them. And when they left campus, I would see them in their car to go. And I did that because I wanted them to see a familiar face. I wanted them to see someone on campus. If this was your first time to campus, you saw someone greeting you at that door. Uh, an alumnus came back many, many, not many years ago, but a few years ago, and said, Mr. Long, I remember every single time I came to Rectory School from Legends Limousine, you were there saying hello, and every single time I got on that Legends Limousine, you were saying goodbye. He said, that made me feel, as a young sixth grader coming to this campus, welcome, it made me feel warm, it made me feel like I was coming home to a family. So, you know, you can pick which road sign you want for that one, uh, but I like to say the welcome to a new state sign. Um, I'm kind of nice about the speech as I go on here. Plus, my chief here, he has to finish the Rube Goldberg project, so I'm going to wrap this up. Tristan calls my Rube Goldberg project the Rudy Gobert project. He's uh, a basketball player, but not quite Tristan. Uh, finally, you know, there are so many road signs that we can pick uh, throughout our journey in life. But, but one thing that, that I want to say is, a couple years ago I was at a board meeting, this was before I became my position as being on the board, and there was a couple of faculty members there, and I, and I chimed in and I said, what I do at Rectory, I cannot do at any other school. And a faculty member chimed in and said, yes you can. And a board member, his last name was Roddy, he's married to a sports center personality, goes, no you can't. He says, Rectory is a very, very special place. You will not be able to do it. I know as I dive up to part, like many of you in the Sunday chapter, I will not be able to do everything that I did here at any other school because this is a very, very special place. It's always going to be in my heart. It's half my career has been working here. Uh, and every single day I try to take two things to rectory school. And you can take this to your life. I do it everything I, I do, but for rectory school in particular. Number one, I was always told this. Make this space, place special, more special than the school down the road. And I always brought that to what I did here. Because you can go to any school and get an education. But there's things that you get out of the classroom that makes this place even more special. And the second thing that I always try and do is kind of what the Navy SEALs do too, is I've always wanted to leave a place better than the condition that I Anytime I leave, I've lived 13 places on this campus, maybe I don't know how many times I've moved on this campus, 
But every single time I've moved, I tried to leave that place clean and better than the place and the condition that I found. Every single time that I've had a class, I try and make new students better in nine months than when you were from day one when you walked in. Every time I ran the dining hall and I yelled at you guys, I tried to make you better. Um, last thing I want to say is, in the back of my classroom, I have a quote uh, from Steve Prefontaine. If you don't know who Steve Prefontaine is, he was actually dead before the time I was born. He was one of the greatest American distance runners to ever live and died in a very early, early life. Uh, but his quote is something that I carry with me every single day. And to do what I do every day, teachers do every day, and faculty here, employees at Rectory School, is very special. And this is a family, and it is a community. Uh, in my time here, there have been 12 Rectory students who are no longer with us alumni, who have passed away early. And those are the hardest times to come by as a faculty member. Um, and, and, and I'll always remember that, and we have groups of students that when the student passes away from the class, we all talk, and we, we show up at their funerals as best we can. Um, and in the back of my class, I always bring this to every single day that I live, I teach. If I can run, I will run. Uh, without pain, I will do it. Um, and Steve Prefontaine said this, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. And every single day I take that with me, that I have the gift to do so many different things. And, and, and I park my car all the way on the other side of the parking lot to walk to school. I'm the first one at school most days. I could park in the beginning. And why do I park so far away? Uh, a fellow faculty member told me this years ago, because I can walk. The fact that I can walk, I'm going to park so far away, because what if somebody can't walk and I'm taking them to a spot? So if you have a gift, give your best every single day. Whether it's a rectory, another school, or anywhere you have it. If you give your best, you are helping others with your gift. Thank you.
final prayer together, I just want to remind you that you are going to be walking with your teacher or to the back to rector school, and you're going to be in G period. Thank you to everyone who participated. I know it took a lot of courage to do so, so we really appreciate you all. So if we could say our final, final blessing, which is something we haven't said before at Rectory, it's different than our usual one. This is an Irish blessing that many people may recognize. So if you could please look to the back of your, at the bottom of your program, and recite it. May the road rise to meet you. 